<laughs> Some of the news footage of uh, Madonna's premiere the other night, the truth the dare opened here in New York City. It really was a tumultuous opening, paparazzi running like crazy. And as you notice, she's a brunette now, but Kathy has inside information that she has changed her hair color again. When we interviewed her several weeks ago, she was still a blonde, and I kind of got used to her as a blonde, yeah. you know? So, um, okay, here we go. We're going to take you now. I'm getting nervous all over again. <laughs> you were a little nervous. Uh, yeah, I was excited. Uh, here we go up to the 16th floor of the Four Seasons Hotel in L.A., right on the pad, just like Madonna wanted, 6 o'clock at night, in black and white, and here's She always gets what she wants. That's it, telling me. Madonna, you look great. Well? Absolutely beautiful. I always look good in my nightgown. Yeah, hold on. I'm flattered. <laughs> and how about this shirt? You know, it's strange. I feel, I feel strangely drawn to this shirt. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering why. Yes, I know why. It has a scent to it. <laughs> I interviewed Warren Beatty in this shirt. He loved it so much, oh. I went out and bought him one. Oh, really? So I thought, well, I'm... I'll break out the shirt. Well, how do you it. feel in it? Do you feel like a heel in that shirt? Not, oh, should I? Or should I feel like Warren Beatty? Look at them. They won't leave us alone. <laughs> yes, I've got Madonna here. But this is it, Madonna. This is your town. Look. That's right. You're the biggest star in the world. There it is. Los Angeles. Century City out there. Brentwood. The ocean. There's my house up there. Hollywood Hills. And there's your house way up there. Huh? You're, you're standing in front of my camera, aren't you? <laughs> do you, uh, do you like it out there? I adore it. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Which do you prefer, Central Park, Central Park or? West, uh, depends on what kind of a mood I'm in. Uh -huh. If I if I want to be left alone, I live here, and if I want to sort of stir up some trouble, I go to New York. You know, I read about it fair that uh, you were uh, you could get away with walking the streets better in New York than out here. Well. I can get away with walking in the streets in New York because everybody walks on the streets yeah. here uh, in, in New York. No, but there's no pedestrians in L.A. So but you, you really put your little hat out. on and nobody recognizes Yeah. On the other hand, they hang out in front of my apartment building a, a lot more than they do in front of my house. You so. see, that would drive me crazy. Well, it does drive me crazy. Oh, nothing you can do about it. Um, nothing is legal. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Now, the last time we all saw you was at the Academy Awards. Yeah. You looked great. You sang the heck out of that song. But am I the only guy who recognized that the $20 million earring from Harry Winston was hanging. slipped off and fell right here. Well, uh, I don't know. I think um, I think a lot of people saw that. Oh, did they? I think Ron Winston saw it more than anybody. <laughs> well, you didn't want that thing to fall. And I was saying, oh, God, if it falls off, it's really going to bug her, you know. Who knows what's going to happen, but it stayed right there. I know. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Did you feel it slipping? Yeah. And I felt like a retard. Did it drive you a little crazy? Yeah. Who wants an earring hanging on their hair? But nobody else. No, not many people know this. I hope so. But you and Michael Jackson, now you see, I would be at a loss to talk to Michael Jackson as you're driving in the limo and all that traffic. What do you talk about with Michael Jackson? What do we talk about? Um, well, first I beg him not to wear sunglasses. <laughs> and of course he complies. Uh -huh, of course. I'm stronger than he is. That's right. And uh, then we um, exchange powder puffs. <laughs> <laughs> so you both look wonderful. We both powder our noses and. Uh -huh. And uh, we compare bank accounts. I don't know. <laughs> uh, dynamite guy. Uh, yeah, he's great. And you, he's great. Naturally, everybody was looking at the twosomes as they walked up. I know. You guys got the most recognition. Let's yeah. face it, two of the superstars of our time. Yeah. Now, the Marilyn Monroe thing, you know, everybody says, well, Madonna keeps looking like Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. And you do. Sometimes. People mm -hmm. are saying, well, does she want to be Marilyn Monroe? Is she fascinated by no, her? Or is it coincidence? I'm of course I'm fascinated by her like everybody else, but it's more it's more me paying homage to her than I don't want to be Marilyn Monroe. I, I mean, I want to live, first mm -hmm, of all. Sure. And uh, I want to be happy. And um, I would say that the one thing that I could relate to in, as far as her persona goes is that she, uh, I think her, um, her sexuality was... Um, a big part of her, her mm -hmm. persona, and I think people were rather obsessive about that. Yes, they were. And I can relate to that, yeah. so um, so that's why I make references to her I must tell in you, my performances and stuff. But now everybody wants to be a blonde. Did you see entertainment tonight? Everybody's going blonde. I something. know, and yeah. I think I'm going to have to do something about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now, how are we on Evita? Are we getting close to that? Yes, well, we're standing on a balcony. That's a good start. <laughs> but how many people have gathered down the street? <laughs> Nobody. But Evita is sort of an elusive movie that keeps escaping people. I know, people I know, there. I know. Well, it's a difficult <laughs> movie to make because it's a very grand movie. It's very expensive, and I think Hollywood's a bit nervous about making a, such a grand movie right now because, you know, everybody's trying to um, 
you know, make movies for less right now. Right. And uh, may maybe this isn't such a good movie to make in a time when everyone's trying to practice moderation. That's right. On the other hand, I certainly don't want to be involved in it if it's, you know, a mediocre production. Sure. So either do it grandly or don't do it at all. So we got some big decisions coming up. Yeah. But we're going to see you before that or, or pretty soon now in the Woody Allen's latest movie. Yeah. Yeah, You're happy as that? a brunette. As a brunette, yeah. yeah. So tell me about working with Woody. Well, it was, uh, he's an elusive creature. Um, really uh, a man, a man in charge, though, which I have to admire. Um, mm -hmm. It was great. Uh, it was um, a bit confusing to begin with because he's not, um, he's not real talkative, he's not real sociable, and he doesn't really say a lot. You have to be pretty confident about yourself and what you're doing there. You know, I did one of his first movies, Everything You Wanted to Know About Sex. You did I that? played a panelist, and I must tell you, you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. I said, Woodman, <laughs> what do you want me to do? What are my lines? And the Woodman said to me, Rage, anything you want to say? Yeah. And then he walked away. That kind of freedom is sort of uh, daunting. Right. And everybody says, daunting? what a director. Boy, he gets the best out of his actors. Well, he may. Well, this is what he does that's so great, is that he casts you perfectly. I see. And he, basically, I think he, he hi hires people to, to, to sort of exude what they already exude. You know? Yeah, so sure. It's not a question of trying to be somebody else, mm -hmm. you know? He brings out the best in you. Yeah. And yeah. you felt that's what happened. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's terrific. All right, Madonna, when we come back, we're going to talk about Truth or Dare, Where okay? are we going? Well... You and I are going to stay right here, but you're going to leave us, and we'll be right back in just a moment. All right, here comes uh, the part two of our interview with Madonna. We go back to the 16th floor of the Four Seasons Hotel in Los Angeles for our black and white interview with Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> Look at this. Does anybody know Madonna and Regis Philbin are right here? Look, I'm waving. <laughs> People, look, you'll be thrilled. Madonna in her peddler. Be careful, there's a paparazzi oh, yeah, down paparazzi. there. paparazzi. <laughs> They're everywhere. Now, let's talk about Truth or Dare, your new movie. Okay. Uh, I thought it was a terrific idea to go behind the scenes of your, of your tour, which, of course, was all over the world. And yeah. I, I enjoyed a lot of it. But, you know, I read that Vanity Fair article, so back to that for a moment, and... The man, your manager was a little bit, uh, come see, come saw about it. Skeptical. Skeptical, saying maybe you reveal too much mm -hmm. of yourself. And I'm sure that's what the critics are going to say, too. Some of them are going to wonder, will this come back to haunt Madonna? Did she go too far? I know you like to shock people and mm -hmm. so on. But how do you feel about it? I feel great about it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it reveals too much of me because I feel like that is a small part of my life. Uh -huh. And I feel that there's so much more. And I'm not... On the other hand, you know, critics may say that I didn't reveal enough, you know. This is crazy. Nobody, nobody talks about this on film? Talks about what? The insanity of doing this all on a documentary. It, it, what? It, it, well, this is a serious matter, your throat, yes? Why should I stop here? But does anyone say it? Who's anyone? Well, anyone that comes into this insane atmosphere. You realize they all feel it when they come into this atmosphere. I mean, when they come into your dressing room, when they come wherever you are, they feel crazy. Now, d do they talk about it? No, they accept it. Well, why don't they talk about it? Because. Well, you want to think about that, don't you? No, I don't. Let's get back to the <laughs> okay. If you want to talk it all off camera, you have nothing to do. <laughs> She doesn't want to live off camera. Much less <laughs> talk. <laughs> Nothing to say off camera. Why would you say something if it's off camera? It wasn't just about me. I, I'm not, I didn't make the movie to say, okay, this is a story that's just about me and the behind the scenes. To me, it's about the life of a celebrity, yeah. the life of a performer, the, you know, the ups and downs of being on the road and dealing with you know, all the things that can go wrong, and, yeah. and all, the, all the great things about it, too. And generally, when you see behind the things, behind the scene movies, or what a making of movies, making of concerts, whatever, people sort of edit out all the, the touchy moments, or the, maybe the unattractive sides of people, and, and I decided that I wanted to show that, because that is what a person is made of. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I enjoyed um, your dad calling you on the phone. That was a magic moment for yeah. me. And him saying as both parents, well now, Madonna, I didn't want to bother you. Are you sure I can get in? Is there a ticket for me? That was so... So sweet. Yeah. And you saying anything you want, any time you want to I know, it hasn't dawned on him yet, really. Yeah. So... How did he like the, the racing aspects of the show? Um, well, I think he probably... Um, 
he probably was down in his shoes in certain sections of his show. <laughs> Were you intimidated by having him in the audience? Of course I was. I mean, I'm, I mean, a girl's father is always a girl's father. And yeah. One always wants to please their father. So, as rebellious as I am, I still, you know, want his sure. approval and stuff. I mean, Brad, I'd love it if you'd come to both shows. I don't know. I mean, it's... It's pretty racy in some sections. I don't know if you could take it two nights in a row. Oh, you had to get racy on the thing. Dad, I'm not getting racy. I've been racy. I know, but you're just pulling it down a bit. What, for you? Yeah. No, because that would be compromising my artistic integrity. Well, of course. You you undress in this performance? No. Oh, God. Of course I don't. Okay. Well, whatever you guys can get us tickets for... Dad, I can get you tickets any night you want to come. Uh, would be great. Uh, and just tell me how many tickets you want. And, of course, you visited your mother's uh, uh, grave uh -huh. while you were in Detroit, I believe it was, right? Uh-huh. I wonder how she would have felt about uh, the I, act and the show. I think she would have loved it. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you didn't think about toning it down. I mean, you could have edited anything you want out of that movie. Yeah. You have a lot of kids in your audience who mm -hmm. look up to you, idolize you, and, and maybe they're seeing things and hearing things for the first time. But I don't believe that. I believe that all the issues that I deal with uh, in my movie are things that they see every day, mm -hmm. they, you know, everyday life. I think, you know, parents are kidding themselves if they think that their children aren't exposed to these things. And, um... I think it's a good opportunity for them to see it and, you know, and, and, and ask questions about it and talk about it and say, what was that, what was that? And maybe get their parents to talk about things that normally they wouldn't have, so. But you do like to shock people. You do like to, to get well, them talking about it. it's not necessarily them. shock. What, what it is, it's, 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 it's getting people to think about things, you know, to, to provoking thought, provoking discuss, discussion about, mm -hmm. about issues that are, that are important to me, ah. so. All right, good. I also take it from what I heard in the movie that Sean Penn is still a very special man in your life. Yeah, this is a this is a favorite topic for a lot of people. Well, sure, because you know, I mean, it ended, and yet when you said that, well, because you know, because I still love him. I mean, I, I think when you fall in love with somebody just because you're not together anymore or the relationship ends, you don't the love doesn't end. Mm -hmm. You just cut off your feelings for a person, mm -hmm. and uh, it was you know he plays played a very important role in my life and affected me very deeply, so of course I still care for him. A great well, deal. I, I was impressed. You said he had a lot of guts, he took care of things, he did what he had yeah, to do well, in his way. Yeah. And you liked being married, didn't you? You liked, liked doing the laundry and, <laughs> and carrying those Well, that's like it carried away. <laughs> um, I mean, I, well, there's something uh, therapeutic about it, there's something grounding about it, but I didn't do it a lot. You're going to get married yeah. again, I would assume, sometime in the future? Well, if anyone's foolish enough to ask me. Really? But <laughs> you look at yourself like that? No, I, I just wonder what kind of a man is it going to take. I, I wonder that, too. Well, you know, I married myself. Really? Happily oh, married. Too, but you can see a little attraction. I know you can. Tell me the truth. You can be an attractive man or not. Do I think you're attractive? Yeah. Yes, but does Kathy think you're attractive? No, <laughs> not Kathy. She's Do the you last. think Kathy's going to like my movie? Uh, I'm anxious to hear what she has to say really? about it. You know, she, she, she too is outspoken. Really? You know, but knowing uh, where you're so coming from... my own heart. <laughs> knowing what your feelings are about it, now maybe when she sees it, she'll understand why you felt that yeah. you had to do this. Did you take a workout today? Well, I did. Take a seal here. This is, this is, huh? Okay, but check that out. Not bad, but not a, not bad, very good. But check this out, really, take another. Is it you're wearing Warren's shirt? Is it his arm? No, that's me. <laughs> take another feel and tell me that's Warren's arm. Forget it. Warren wishes he had arms like this. <laughs> Warren, Warren. So what do you think makes a man sexy? Personality? Absolutely. Sense of humor? All those things. Yeah. The sense of humor is part of personality. But you yes. see, you're such a big star now that a lot of guys are intimidated by that. Mm -hmm. By you. Well, then whoever isn't intimidated by it deserves to be with me. Let him step forward and make his claim. Yeah. Huh? That's, <laughs> <win. laughs> That's right. Well, listen, I, I love being with you. And, uh, Who doesn't? <laughs> I'm just flattered that you broke out the good penwa for me. <laughs> this is a penwa, isn't it? Well, this is my nightgown. Your yes. nightgown, yeah. But it, I didn't wear it last night. It's clean, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, because I hate, I hate an overnight... Uh... You hate a dirty nightgown. <laughs> <laughs> She's wild. She's wild. She's wild. But you see, I'm inspiring her. I'm bringing out the animal on Madonna. I could stand here all day. We got the world on our fingertips right now. I could stand on you all day. That wouldn't be a bad idea either. We better get out of here. Madonna, it's been terrific.
Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Not. I enjoyed it. You're terrific. We'll be back with uh, more of our How? show. <gasps> we